Please be seated. It is such an incredible honor to be able to introduce Rabbi Chaplain Colonel Lazy Larry Baser. Rabbi Larry Baser is both the R ARNG Director of Religious Affairs and the Deputy Director, National Guard Bureau Office of the Joint Chaplain. He previously served over 15 years as the Joint Force Headquarters State Chaplain for the Massachusetts National Guard. He deployed with the 26th Maneuver Enhancement Brigade in support of Operation Enduring Freedom from August 2011 to February 2012. In 2013, Rabbi Baser oversaw the chaplaincy response for the Boston Marathon bombing. Twelve years earlier, he was called to serve as a chaplain for the 9-11 World Trade Center attack response. Rabbi Baser is the senior-ranking Jewish chaplain in the United States Armed Forces. Another fun fact, Rabbi Baser also serves on the Priest Review Board for the Archdiocese of Boston. I have been so blessed to know Rabbi Baser, uh, both in, in a professional capacity, but also and especially in a personal capacity. I always look forward to getting to see you. And um, a highlight for me of APAC every year is getting to hang out with you and talk about Israel and everything that's going on in the world. You have a way of bringing your, just your warmth to everything that you do. And just being in your presence makes you feel like your heart is opening and the world is expanding. And I know that you bring that same ability to elevate the world and to bring kindness and love and presence to everyone that you talk to. And so it's just a great honor to introduce you, and we are so excited to learn from you today. Well, well it's really, truly a great honor to be with all of you this Shabbat, and thank you so much for those kind words, and uh, especially the, the singing. One of the things I thought, would you go into the Army Cadence song? So, <laughs> so but uh, it's an honor, and to my dear friend who uh, the first invitation came from, Rabbi Robinson from Israel, we stay healthy, we look forward to you coming home, and we miss you. So. Hopefully she might be watching online and we miss you and love you. If you have served in our United States Armed Forces, present or in past, if you are so able to, I'm gonna ask you to rise. If you served in our military at some point. Thank you. If you have a loved one who is serving or your family, a family member has served, please rise. And thank you for what you do. All of you are connected, and all of us who help support, especially this weekend, going back to 1775, not far from here, Lexington and Concord, where Massachusetts units fought and began what we celebrate today. So thank you all. Convergence of different ideas or systems or different people coming together or dates for me are always interesting. This weekend, we celebrate the birth of our nation, the United States of America, on the 4th of July. After 246 years on Monday, we are still living with this experiment of democracy as we strive to form a more perfect union. How incredible it is that it is, you heard today, also Parsha Korah, the quintessential Torah reading on the challenge to leadership, finger pointing, and rebellion. And then sometimes I think, putting this all together, here I am, a rabbi standing before you, wearing the new Army Green Service uniform, a throwback to the greatest generation, with the rank of colonel, and what still gives me awe, the fact that also on my uniform are the Sirite Brot, the Ten Commandments, and the Star of David, all mixed together today. I must state outright 
that I will not be talking about present-day rebellions and challenges to leadership and connecting it to our Parsha for two reasons. One, I do represent, standing before you, the United States government and the military. And two, it is far above my pay grade. <laughs> what I want to share with you is my reflection of celebrating our nation's birth as a member of the United States military and what it means to serve as a rabbi and a Jew in our armed forces and specifically our National Guard. Because the big joke, as some of us know, you know, nice Jewish boys and girls don't go into, you shouldn't be clergy, call the home air, all the more so, definitely not in the army. Yes, I played with GI Joes, and I played soldier when I was young. I laughed at friends in college when they brought, bought matching pairs of camouflage pants. Why would you do that? And a few years later, I have four sets of my own with my name on it. It has been an honor to wear the uniform for over 34 years. As a chaplain, I am a chaplain to all service members and their families, and specifically a Jewish chaplain to our Jewish service members. But over the years, in a sense, I've been a rabbi to all faiths or those not of faith. As I would say to them, when they would say, I've never had a rabbi before as a chaplain, I would say, it's good to have a rabbi. A brief commercial for what it means to be in the National Guard. We hear it all the time. I've been in the National Guard since 1999, first in New York and now in Massachusetts. There are three components that make up the, the Army and also in a sense the Air Force, active component. Those are all your active duty folks, like being an artillery officer at Fort Sill or at Fort Bragg or, a, or it's connected with the Air Force at Hanscom Air Force Base, not far from here. The reserves, those are the people that are called up to supplement on federal orders to the active military. And then there is the National Guard. Each state, all 54 states, territories in the District of Columbia have a National Guard. We're the ones that the governor calls up to deal with hurricanes or blizzards or COVID-19 vaccinations or civil unrest, a capital response. And we're also the ones that get called when our nation needs us overseas. Massachusetts, our lineage goes back to 1636. We're known as the nation's first and we have, there are units within our guard that have a battle streamer. Those are those things hanging on like the army flag that say Lexington or Gettysburg or Fort Sumner. And I'm the first Jewish chaplain in the Massachusetts National Guard since 1636. Just as the Declaration of Independence liberated us from the oppressive rule from across the ocean, and the Constitution granted us freedom of worship, preserving this right is a sacred obligation. My role as a military chaplain is to perform or provide, ensure and support religious freedom, or not religious freedom, or those who don't have a religion, of our service members. I don't have to perform mass, but I do have to provide and help provide mass for my Catholic soldiers. One of the things that was interesting on my deployment to Afghanistan was that I helped the Catholic chaplain who was running around in a crazy schedule to get a better mass schedule to visit the various bases. And by the way, when you come from Massachusetts, I'm, I'm told there's a lot of Catholics. And together, here it is, a rabbi and a priest helped put together, convert a warehouse on our base into a basilica for Catholic Mass for them. And I was part of the dedication. And as a rabbi, my job is to reach out and allow our Jewish personnel to feel connected to their Judaism wherever they are on, this, on the spectrum. And I still remember having one senior officer grew up as she said, from down south in a very reformed uh, family and congregation, it was the first time she ever saw a Torah up close. That's what Jewish chaplains do. 
I wasn't always on active duty as I am now, but I was very proudly the rabbi at Temple Beth Shalom in Framingham, Massachusetts for over 15 years. I'm honored that some of my former congregants and dear friends are here too. But for my last number of years, as you've heard, I am on active duty with the National Guard Bureau. My role is to oversee the religious response or engagement or state partnerships with foreign military chaplaincies or to respond to disasters within our country or of, or of late overseeing religious exemptions including beards for Jews, Muslims, Sikhs, Norse pagans and even just of late this week the approval of headscarves for Druids. Druids. That's what we protect and ensure. And of course, overseeing the COVID-19 vaccine, religious exemption waivers, and counseling senior leaders of what this means as they struggled with it. All these reflect the right of religious practice, what our nation protects, and my charge is to ensure the dignity of our service members and the process gets followed so they can have the religious exemptions they seek. I may not always understand or agree, but I am honored to uphold that sacred obligation to allow them to practice their personal beliefs freely and to provide counseling directly. I'll give you a quick, a few, so if we say, battle stories. During the, the sort of the height of the COVID, uh, COVID epi uh, epidemic, you know the horrendous story that came out of the Hol Holyoke so Soldiers Home and how over, well over 100 veterans died of COVID. It was our National Guard that came in and started helping things. And so there was one, there was about a handful of soldiers still left there, veterans. And one of them was Jewish, who did not have a place to go to yet. And he was dying, and his daughter was, was terrified that, she would, that no one would be with him. And so through working through the chaplain that was there, because all the regular veteran, uh, veteran services chaplains weren't going in, our guard chaplain was working to get the daughter in, and then she said, and I want a rabbi for my father. And he was one of my former chaplains that I worked with here and brought him into the guard, and he said, well, uh, we don't have a rabbi around, but I think I know one. And one night I got a call from this chaplain and said, can you help out here? And the next night, with the daughter there over a cell phone, to be able to pray the Shema and Vidui for this veteran at the close of his life. That's what it means to be a chaplain in the military, to be a rabbi. But part of my work from there is also being able to reach out to international lanes as part of my job as the deputy director for the Joint Chaplain's Office. We have these the National Guard, all the states have partners with nations around the world, working with their militaries and with many of them, religious engagement. So pre-COVID, I had the opportunity to travel with the Ohio State Chaplain and his team to Serbia. I never thought I would go to Serbia. And there, going around, I also probably saw more Orthodox churches that I would ever step into in my entire life. But at one point, seeing one that had sort of the, the, the ashes remains from a, what they saw as a great massacre in a region that was run by the Croats, I'll try not to be political here, um, this was sacred ground for them, sacred soil that they had in this dedicated army base. And so as we were talking, and I sort of put two things to, together, it was actually the Serbs were quite good to Jews during World War II. And they protected many of them. And as I started realizing, probably most of those, those Serbian citizens that were there were Serbian Jews. Those were the remains of Serbian Jews within that vessel in this, Greek orth in this Orthodox, Serbian Orthodox Church. And so afterwards, the next morning over coffee and something called rakia, 
which is basically the equivalent of Schlibovitz, so Schlibovitz at 7 a.m. in the morning. We were talking, and here it is with this general, I talked about memory and how powerful that was and what Serbia did for the Jews. And the commander there and, and their chaplains were like, it was a connection between Jews and Orthodox. It was a connection of two militaries and the ability to say, Zahor, remembering is an important part that gives us meaning. That's bringing Torah, that's bringing our tradition to the world, great honor. A few weeks ago, I had a chance to go to another place I never thought I would visit, and that was Ghana in Africa. And I went with my dear friend who's the chaplain of the North Dakota National Guard, and that's their partner nation. And we went to do training of their chaplains. They probably have some of the most incredible relationships, the chaplains who are mostly Catholic, Protestant, and Muslim. So imams, priests, and ministers all together, all getting along. And so we were doing various trainings on chaplaincy, and we had some time, and I, part of the training I said, hey, have any of you ever met a rabbi, unless a Jewish person before? And two people raised their hand, and it was because they were on the peacekeeping mission in Lebanon when the Ghanaian army was there. And so they encountered Israelis. And so I said, would you like to ask me anything about Judaism? And all their eyes lit up. And here was the opportunity, freely, without any sort of prejudice or what's going on. So why don't you believe in Jesus? What is the Messiah? How do you look at scripture? What does resurrection mean? It was an incredible encounter. It's what it meant to be present, to be Orla Goyim, a light unto the nations at that moment. And then two days later, I had the opportunity with our team, we were doing a little sightseeing to visit this magnificent sort of castle palace on the shores of Ghana. We were in Accra. And the it was partly the presidential palace for many years. Some movies were made there, including a scene from The, from, uh, the Crown, I was told. But it also, in this beautiful part above, underneath were dungeons. This castle was the point of demarcation for when slaves that were captured came in, were held by slave masters until the boats arrived that went to the west. And when they left those dungeons, those prisons, they would go down a stairwell, which we walked, and through a door that was called the door of no return. And onto the shore, the beach, and on two ships over here. That day, that, that day that was haunting all of us was also Yom HaShoah, coming together at different points. One of the things I do is to advise senior leaders in issues of moral and ethics. But as a rabbi, when I have these encounters with senior leaders, I'm bringing Torah. I'm bringing our tradition. At times, I've thought about Parsha Korach and what leadership means. Many times as I brief a multi-star general, words of Hillel from Pirkei Avot come out. Be like the disciples of Aaron, loving peace and pursuing peace. Reminding leaders to greet their subordinates with a pleasant face and smile, or helping a service member to voice difficult opinions, not like Korach for personal gain, but with honor and respect, and definitely encourage service members to stay away from areas that might swallow them up. Our military leaders, who I greatly respect, Need, want the help from their chaplains for these moral and ethical issues they face, how they respond to suicide of service members, sexual harassment, toxic leadership. And ultimately, these are the senior letters, leaders that I'm proud to serve, to be their chaplain, to be their rabbi, 
I'm called chappy sometimes, that are charged to send our brave men and women into combat or to secure the safety of our own citizens. Yes, Parsha Koroth does teach us about leadership. Jewish chaplains are there to serve them, bringing, bringing hope from our tradition for their unit, for the community, for the nation, with no self-interest. Jewish chaplains help remind our military leaders of hope, of giving the pulse of the, of the troops, hearing the lament how they could have done better, even when they are amazing leaders, to be that Orla Goyim. So with tablets on a uniform, my goal always striving to be Orla Goyim, a light unto the nations, is what it means for me to serve God and country on this July 4th. So this weekend, I ask you, let us dedicate ourselves to always making our nation better, to be that more perfect union, to pray for our leaders to lead with humility and with wisdom, to be proud of all that we have, to be thankful for this nation, warts and all, and so I close with both the words of the prophet Micha and George Washington in his letter to the Newport Synagogue. It has been told to you, O mortal, what is good and what is eternal requires of you, only to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. For happily, the government of the United States, which gives to bigotry no sanction, to persecution no assistance, requires only that they who live under its protection shall demean themselves as good citizens and giving it on all occasions their effectual support. May it be so. May we make a difference. Happy Independence Day. Shabbat Shalom.